Kubernetes is an open source platform that automates the deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. But how does it keep apps running smoothly at scale, even when servers crash or traffic spikes? And why has it become the foundation of cloud native development for giants like Google and Netflix? In this video, I'll break down the core concepts of Kubernetes, showing you exactly how it handles complex systems and scales your apps automatically. Let's dive into pods, the most fundamental unit in Kubernetes. A pod is essentially a wrapper around one or more containers that share the same network and storage resources. Each pod in Kubernetes represents a single instance of a running application. But why are pods important? Well, containers within the same pod can communicate with each other easily because they share the same local network. This allows them to work together as part of a single application. For example, you might have an app container and a sidecar container that logs application data or handles monitoring. However, pods are ephemeral, meaning they don't live forever. If a pod fails, Kubernetes can replace it automatically. But pods themselves are often used to host services or jobs that need to be resilient and scalable. Next, let's talk about deployments. A deployment is how Kubernetes manages pods. It describes the desired state of your application and ensures that this state is maintained. You might want to run three replicas of your app for scalability or update your app to a new version without downtime. Deployments make that happen. For example, if you want to update your application with new code, a deployment handles that by gradually replacing the old pods with new ones. Kubernetes will make sure that there's no downtime during this update. This process is called a rolling update, where pods are replaced one by one, ensuring that the app stays available to users. Deployments also make scaling your application easier. If you need to handle more traffic, you can scale up by adding more pods, and Kubernetes will take care of distributing traffic and maintaining the desired number of replicas. Now, let's talk about services. A service is an abstraction that defines a logical set of pods and a policy to access them. The key thing here is that services provide stable endpoints for pods that may be dynamically created or destroyed. For example, imagine your app is running across several pods. If a user wants to access your app, you don't want them connecting to a specific pod because pods can be created or destroyed at any time. Instead, you create a service, which gives you a consistent IP address or DNS name. The service will automatically route traffic to the correct pod, even as pods come and go. There are different types of services. Cluster IP is the default service type, and it assigns a fixed internal IP address to facilitate communication within a cluster. The node port service type exposes your service on a static port on each node's IP, and Load Balancer creates an external load balancer to distribute traffic to pods. When we're dealing with external traffic coming into the cluster, we need a way to manage that traffic and route it to the correct service. That's where ingress comes into play. Ingress is an API object that manages external access to services in a Kubernetes cluster, typically over HTTP or HTTPS. Ingress provides features like URL-based routing, which means you can define rules to route traffic based on the URL path. For example, if a user visits slash app1, the traffic can be routed to one service, while traffic to slash app2 can go to another. Now, let's talk about TLS termination, which is often handled by Ingress controllers. TLS termination means that the ingress controller decrypts encrypted traffic, or HTTPS, before passing it to the backend services. This is important because it offloads the task of managing SSL or TLS encryption from your application pods. With TLS termination, the ingress controller takes care of SSL certificates and decryption, ensuring that traffic is secure when it enters the cluster. The ingress controller handles all the SSL handshakes and traffic decryption. Next, we have persistent volumes, or PVs, and persistent volume claims, or PVCs. In Kubernetes, pods are ephemeral, meaning they can be created and destroyed frequently. But what if your application needs to store data, like a database, or user uploads? Kubernetes solves this problem with persistent storage. A persistent volume is a piece of storage in your cluster that has been provisioned by an administrator. And a persistent volume claim is a request for storage made by a pod. It's like a pod saying, I need storage of this size and type. Kubernetes then matches the persistent volume claim with an available persistent volume, and the pod can mount the volume to store its data. 
Persistent volumes and claims ensure that data is kept intact even if pods are restarted or rescheduled to a different node. This is very important for stateful applications like databases. Now let's talk about managing resources and access control with namespaces and RBAC. Kubernetes allows you to divide your cluster into multiple namespaces, and this is particularly useful when you want to separate different environments such as development, staging and production, or manage different teams' workloads within the same cluster. Namespaces provide a way to organize resources so they don't clash with one another. With RBAC, or Role-Based Access Control, you can manage permissions for users or services in your cluster. You can define who can access what resources and perform which actions. One of the most powerful features of Kubernetes is its ability to scale and self-heal. With Kubernetes, you can automatically scale your application based on demand. For instance, if traffic increases, Kubernetes can launch more pods to handle the load. Conversely, if traffic decreases, it can scale down the number of pods to save resources. Kubernetes also handles self-healing. If a pod fails or becomes unresponsive, Kubernetes will detect this and replace it with a new one. This ensures your application remains highly available and resilient to failures. The TLDR is that Kubernetes helps automate the management of containerized applications, making it easier to deploy, scale, and maintain them. Thank you very much for watching, and if you want to deep dive into any of these topics, be sure to check out other videos on my channel or leave your questions in the comments below. If you would like to support the channel, consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell icon for more content on Kubernetes and cloud-native technologies. As always, see you in the next video, and happy coding!